Hey guys, Eric here with the Savvy Campers. It's been a while, but we have something fun for you today. So we got a product from Lion Energy. It's called the Lion Energy Trek, and we are one of the first people to have this and review it for you guys. When they reached out and said, hey Eric, we've got this new product, we want you to check it out. Of course I jumped on board. How could you not? Their products are awesome. So let's bust into it and uh, see what we've got in here. All right, so first off, let's do an unboxing and we'll show you what's in, in the actual box here. And this is the Lion Trek, and this is going after not necessarily a, a pocket model um, power bank, but it's going after a little bit bigger user, maybe a traveler, uh, nomad, camper. Um, this is airplane, airplane safe. So to be legally um, acceptable on an airplane for lithium batteries, they have to be 100, um, 100 watt hours or less, and this is 99.9. Uh, .9. So it just barely makes it. I was just looking to see if they had that labeled on here. Okay, so we've got the unit. And then we've got a power bank. It's a USB-C power bank, and that is 60 watt. And then we've got the cable for it. So let's go ahead and look at the unit. So first we've got a fan, or a, at least an air intake. We've got an input here. Looks like it's a 40 watt max, 11 to 26 volts. Then we come around, we've got nothing on this side. Oh, here's the fan on this side. So this must be the exhaust intakes on the other side. Here's where the goods are. So we've got power button. We've got our inverter on and off button. We've got our 2.4 amp hour um, USBs and then our USB-C input slash output. Here we've got 60 watt input output to USB a is 150 watt max inverter, uh, barrel input, and then, you know, engineered in America, made in China. So let's go ahead and kick it on. And we did, uh, let's see, there we go. Looks like you have to hold it for a little bit. It was 28% when it was shipped. I just charged it up to 100% uh, for you guys, a little movie magic behind the scenes. So uh, let's go ahead and see what happens. So it says it can last about 99 hours. So let's kick this on and, and see what it does. Okay, so just with the inverter on, it went down to 58 hours because the inverter does draw some power even if nothing's plugged in. So let's talk about what you would use a product like this for. Um, this product can actually be used for a lot of things. It can be used um, to power things. You can power your laptop. You can power things with basically any 110 volt device that's 150 watts or less, you can power with this. Um, you can charge, you can charge your tablets, you can charge your laptop, you can charge a, a phone, you can charge cameras on the go, anything like that. Um, you can, obviously with this device, you can power lighting. I've used a device similar to this to power, I have these, uh, these lights here. So sometimes if I'm not close to an outlet, I'll use it to power those. And actually when I did, I did some construction on our basement, I used essentially one of our Lion Energy lithium batteries with just a normal inverter and I powered those two lights for construction. Those lights are awesome. Um, you really can't go wrong and it really helped out just being able to see things. I redid our whole basement. So I had all the electrical turned off. I had no power down there whatsoever. And I, used my Lion Energy, uh, the UT1300 with an inverter, and that worked wonders. Um, you can obviously power game consoles, and you might even be able to power like a smaller uh, LCD TV or LED TV and, um, and a game console, like a Nintendo Switch, something like that. To charge this, you can either use the input here, 60 watt from the power bank, or you could actually use solar. They have a 50 watt uh, solar panel that you can add with this. And that'll charge this power bank in about three hours and 30 minutes. If you use the 60 watt charger that, that's included, about an hour 55 minutes. Before I get too far ahead in the video and forget about this, if you do wanna pick one of these units up, use our co coupon code Savvy Campers. I'll have a link down in the description as well that you can go directly to Lion Energy's website and take a peek at it and buy it using our discount. Basically the type of battery that is in this device is a lithium iron phosphate. And it should last about 2,000 cycles and still have greater than 80% 80, 80 of its um, usable life left. Um, these batteries, if you have a box like this, uh, you can charge it up 
hold it for about a year on the shelf, but uh, they do recommend charging, charging every six months, but these will last um, somewhat a year. I've got s some other power banks that I have, and uh, they were the older style that didn't really have the percent meter, but after maybe a year of sitting, I had about three out of four bars, something like that. So they don't really self-discharge a lot, so that's a good thing, but you do wanna make sure they're topped off because if your power goes out and you're relying on any type of power bank, you wanna make sure it's charged. All right, so we have a bit of a mess here. So we've got the Lion Track hooked up to this uh, surge protector. And then we've got a crock pot. We've got the rest of our studio lighting. And then we've got a lamp here. So we're going to go ahead and see, uh, see how, much amp or how much wattage that we can continuously draw. So let's turn the inverter on. There we go. We've got our second light. So let's go ahead and uh, turn this uh, crock pot on. So we're running about 112, 115 watts. Shows we've got about 56 minutes of time. So let's go ahead and put a uh, 10 watt bulb in this lamp right here. You can't see me, but it's going in. Oh, I guess we got to plug it in first. All right, here we go. 9.5 watts. There we go. So now we're running about 132, 128, 133. Okay, it's pushing this just fine. No fan on on the unit. Let's turn that off. Let's go up to a 23 watt bulb. Okay, so we are showing about 120 watts. So now we've got the bulb on. All right, we've got about 136, 140, 137. And it's handling it fine. I've got no fan yet. Okay. Oh, the fan just kicked on. Okay, so let's see. Actually, let's see, uh, let's turn that back on and let's add a little charger. So we've got a little stick light here. This is the fun part about product testing is we can just really play with it. Okay, so we're running about 140, 141 watts. Now we plug this in, 141, 145, 150. We're touching 150 and it's not turning off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's put a, okay, the fan's kicking on a little hotter now, or a little higher. All right, we're gonna throw a 40 watt bulb in here. But I'm gonna unplug the studio light. So now we're down to about 120 Oh, about 100 watts, so we should go up to 140. Okay, we 140, 152. So we are at about 150. Oh, there we go. We hit 153, and the overcurrent protection hit. So this does uh, kick off right at about 150 watts. All right, so we have actually used this. We've cycled it. We've spent about four or five days playing with it, and... It works pretty good. One disappointment is the obviously the 150 watt inverter. Um, I tried the Traeger test. It will not run a Traeger. It will not run a little mini wine fridge. Maybe one of the little like 1.6 cubic foot ones, but this is maybe a 3.6, so it won't one run, run one of those. It'll turn it on, start it up, and then once the compressor kicks on, it'll die. This will run a TV and a sound bar and a game system, so you could run run that when you're on the go or at a campsite um, in your RV. In your RV, you could use one of these for your TV instead of using a, an actual power, um, power inverter for the whole RV. You can just throw this right under your TV, power your TV, power your DVD player or your Amazon um, Fire Stick, and this will run that, that TV in your trailer uh, just fine for probably about six, seven hours. Um, we tried actually, we ran this ran a glue gun with this and that actually worked really well. I was surprised that it ran a glue gun, but um, just because of the heat output of it. 
and that was surprising so we could actually my daughter used it we put this on the table and she had the glue gun and she was able to use it she didn't have to be tethered into to the wall um, we did use this for, to run a crock pot it ran for about an hour i've got some good um all right so we just had the lion trek um running this crock pot here for about an hour and uh you can see the external temperature of the crock pot is about 90 to 100 and we were on high internally i put a bunch of frozen stuff in there um can see that but then let's look at the unit this just shut off so it looks like this side we see the battery cell side and it was pulling about a, a hair over 100 watts for about an hour so it looks like our cells are about 86 and look at you can see the inverter got it to about 100 degrees so this is the intake side here and then the exhaust side is on this side so the exhaust is about 90 90 degrees so let's check out this side of the unit okay so we're about 124 degrees it's a little warm I mean I can touch it it's 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 very warm but um, it's not not too bad so so that ran a crock pot for about an hour. If it was actually on low, it cycles on and off, on and off, so it could run it for a lot longer. But if it was actually up to temperature, and then you took the crock pot and threw it in your car with this on low to just stay warm, I bet you could last probably four hours or so on low once it's actually hot and up to temperature. I did use the uh, 60 watt output on here to run our MacBook. That worked flawlessly. It, it charged it up. It was, it was great. And then I used, um, I threw a couple other devices on here so we could actually charge our cell phone. And then I actually charged, um, I think it was the, either the Apple mouse or Apple keyboard. I did with this too at the same time. So it was kind of nice to be able to charge all three devices and it worked fine. And then I charged another MacBook on this and it handled that flawlessly with both, were with actually all four outputs um, taken. So this is a good little device. It's not something that, hey, if you're out of power, it's great for, it's not gonna run a lot of devices. It will run lighting. These lights are great. I've got two of these lights and it will run those for several hours. So if you're doing, doing some work in a shop or a basement, or actually maybe you have a shed, this is a perfect thing to put in in a shed. You could have a light in the shed, you can attach solar to it, and it'll always stay topped off and you can run it when you need it. And then when you're done, you can just, uh, it'll sit and charge and you can run, charge uh, like uh, batteries for your um, drills and cord other cordless items. And that is something that could be great for this too. Like I said, it's a great little compact unit. And I think this would go really well right next to my bed in our travel trailer my side doesn't have any usb inputs and so i usually use we have a larger lion energy unit and so i'm going to use this from now on to charge to keep my watch and my phone charged and then cameras while we're out camping and then instead of taking up a ton of room i'm just going to set it like that and it'll just take a little bit of room on my nightstand my other one takes up about from there to there and then about that much width so um, that is what I'm going to use this for and probably in about six months or so in the summer I'm going to do a follow-up review to show you how well this does um, after we use it we actually use these at the house all around um, just to test out so in the garage I've got one to charge my batteries not this model but I've got another battery pack um, or a solar generator um, to do that and uh, so we'll put I don't know 100 cycles 200 cycles on it and uh, see how it does after that Thanks for watching. If you want to check these out, the link to the Lion Energy website is down in the description. Um, this is a great little unit. It's priced very aggressively, and I think it's worth it when you compare it to other little cell phone chargers. If you've got some room for it, you can stow it in your car, leave it there, always have power. You can run some uh, 110 volt devices. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.